Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews and on-site training. In this episode, I want to talk about forgotten C++ Velaray. Every now and then I dig into some little corner of the C++ standard. This one caught my interest recently and, well, we're going to check it out. This episode of C++ Weekly is sponsored by the PVS Studio team. PVS Studio is a static code analyzer developed to detect errors, typos, and security weaknesses for C, C++, and Java code. The PVS Studio plugin can be integrated into Visual Studio, C Lion, Qt Creator, Visual Studio Code, and other IDEs. The analyzer can be integrated into CIs and Cloud CIs. You can find a link to the analyzer in the video description below. Use the CPP Weekly promo code and get a trial license for one month. So I'm calling this Forgotten C++ for one particular reason. We can see that it got some swap and standard begin and standard end updates in C++11, and it got some deduction guides in C++17, but otherwise, this little corner of the standard has been completely ignored since basically C++ 98. But it is an interesting tool, and if you have a use case for it and didn't know it existed, well, you're going to probably find this pretty interesting. Now, what it is, is it's basically vector, but with differences. It does have the ability to do operations across the entire Valeray, and I will demonstrate that. Okay, so of course we are using Compiler Explorer here as always, or usual, and I just have an empty main at the moment. Let's go ahead and get some Valeray action going on. Now you'll note for the sake of this example, I am currently on GCC trunk, which may or may not prove to be a mistake. And I have the architecture set to the latest Intel architecture of Raptor Lake. I believe it's the latest one that this version of GCC supports. But Valeray, like I said, is just basically vector. So we can have an array of ints of something. And I'm gonna go ahead and intentionally obfuscate this a little bit so that we can look at the generated assembly in some cases without worrying about the compiler necessarily optimizing everything away. So I'm just going to create this intentionally unimplemented get data function and we're going to get some data. So at this point the compiler has absolutely no idea what the size of this thing is or anything like that. So what we can do with something like Valeray is say, I want to add four to every single value in the array. And the compiler is inclined to do something like this because it knows that it is operating on all these things in parallel. It's probably going to do some sort of vectorization of the code, which we can see here. We have a SIMD edition of packed integers and we are doing these things in blocks of additions here. Now, we're not doing anything else with the data, so this is just generating a bunch of code that's not being used by anyone. If we wanted to do the equivalent operation with a vector, it would look something like this. Now, it's going to be difficult to compare these things to each other to see if we're getting the same kind of vectorization or not between vector and Valeray. So to drive home the point as to what Valeray is good at, we will look at the fact that you can do things like this, like add four to the entire array and get some fairly clean and nicely vectorized result here. Or you can do something like multiply across the entire Valeray, or easily add two different arrays together. And that's cool, but 
The standard allows specifically for an operation on a Valeray to not necessarily return a new Valeray. If we look here in the standard ease, it says any function returning a Valeray t is permitted to return an object of another type, provided all the const member functions of Valeray are also applicable to this type. This return type shall not add more than two levels of template nesting over the most deeply nested argument type which I find interestingly specific, but I think they're trying to avoid some sort of template code bloat. So what this means for you is that you can actually do some interesting lazy calculation with Valeray in the case that it makes sense for your code. So I could do something like this. Now this is meaningless by itself, But if I do something like this, the compiler knows that it can take the 42nd result of get to data, add four to it, multiply that by three, and then return the result to that. And we can see this code here, where it takes the input, multiplies that by two, and adds 12 and then adds it back in again. So that's the times three, RAX times two plus RAX is times three, and the 12 is four times three. So this kind of lazy evaluation and mass operation across all of the elements of a Valeray can be very helpful. And there's also things like sine and cosine. So again, it's doing this kind of lazy evaluation, even though it's the sign of the result of adding four plus three, et cetera. And we can see this calculation again happening here with EAX, and then this gets moved into a, an SSE register, and then we call sign on that particular result and return that. So we could return a Valeray of ints because our result is actually going to get truncated into an integer and then it would do all of the evaluation at once theoretically in a very efficient way using SSE to apply this across all of the elements. And it does look like a disappointingly simple loop actually going over each of the elements, so your results may vary depending on your compiler implementation. But another reason to refer to this as forgotten standard library is none of this has been updated to constexpr yet, and I'm not sure how it got overlooked in the last three rounds of standard library updates, so it's probably time to see constexpr for it, and probably time for you to look over this and see all the handy routines that it has, like min, max, shifting of the entire array, summing of the entire array. It would be incredibly simple to do a average, for example. Interesting to see partial loop unrolling and vectorization of the summation here. Anyhow, uh, just, you know, look for an opportunity to use Valeray in your code. Perhaps it would come up in the kinds of things that you are doing when you don't need like a full linear algebra package that would provide, you know, all of the rest of these things. So thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Hope you learned something new. Be sure to stick around for next week.